Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can. <laughs> Is anyone yeah, asking questions? You. No. Some <laughs> people have a ton. I guess nobody does anymore. Don't be afraid, guys. So, what are you gonna do a tutorial of for us? I'm just gonna paint, just whatever. Maybe. Uh, I've been doing a lot of paintings, just straight, straight, starting straight in color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I had this idea. So what's what's interesting is uh, I have a friend, one of my best friends, someone that I've known since I was a kid, and he started getting into writing, and so. I thought, hey, you know, it'd be cool if I do an image and you just look at it and you just write something for it. So it's a way for me to practice my painting and then for you to practice your writing. And it's pretty cool. I like it. I mean, I think he's into it too. That makes good. I've been going to the doctor often uh, because I have these these really bad migraines. Not migraines, but there's like really kind of throbbing headaches that feel like there's something behind my left eye, on my right eye, I mean, and it just throbs every day. It sucks. Could be sinus headaches. Sometimes they get really bad and feel like migraines, and they're usually behind the eye. Yeah, so that's what they they discover I did like MRIs and stuff and what they are is there's like this kind of there's like this some sort of tumor actually behind and in my sinus, my sinus cavities that's what they found nothing serious though don't get worried guys and that sounds scary word tumor but it's a benign one which means it's not cancerous it's just something that's just there so we're thinking about what to do next um, so they're t taking me to uh, get a second opinion through neuro neurosurgery, and they're going to tell me what to do next. Yeah, I just got really bad headaches for years, and we're finally getting to the bottom of it, because the doctors that I had before were just like, oh, you're fine. And I'm like, nah, dude, <laughs> this is like serious. It sucks. My life sucks every day with these stupid things. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's alright. Like I said, we're getting to the bottom of it. Did like CAT scans and MRI and all that good stuff, and I think we're finally figuring out what's wrong, which is great. Okay, I've been dying to say this. Maybe this will cheer you up or not. I don't know. But we've actually met twice in person. I went oh, to sure. a robot. Yeah, I went to a robot pencil event for last year, Halloween, before I moved to Vegas, and then I also went oh, to your cool. your book events because I was one of your Kickstarter. Fans. Yeah, I remember you. They showed up. <laughs> I remember, yeah. Yeah, I was off in the corner with uh, art and some other people, and someone drew a really crude giant penis on the table, it's and then I turned it to. Yeah, I turned it into a spaceship, and I drew some other stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do so remember. I was dying to say that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm glad that you've been a huge supporter of me for for so many years. Appreciate that. Yeah, I was I was part of your Kickstarter. I mean, the, I think I discovered you originally on Facebook. Somebody was posting your stuff, and then I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. And then I ended up following you, and you posted about your Kickstarter. I was like, I gotta get this book, and I never asked for my money back because I'm like, I just want this book. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, man, I really appreciate that. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you're still super supportive, and I hope uh, you get a lot out of the class. Yeah, I went to. I was never able to take your courses when I was living in California. So <laughs> now I don't live there anymore, so I have to do it this way.
Yeah, you guys can always ask questions. Just unmute and just ask. Don't, uh, this is like Q&A. This is what the time and place to do it. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt with random story time. No, no, dude. You're awesome. Don't worry about it. Did he really talk about the story about the one in, in was it already or he didn't? I was just taking a shower not too long ago. Uh, I didn't. But uh, I think Yishi had a question. I'll, it's, I'll, I'll tell you that story once Yishi asks his question. But he needs to ask it. That's the first thing that needs to happen. Wait, did somebody ask a question, Ray? Yeah, I think Yishi had one, but he's not talking. Oh, you? Yishi. Yeah. Can you, like, just say it, Yishi? Because it's going to be easy. Oh, he's texting, actually. He just posted it. Yeah, no. Oh, your girlfriend's talking to you? Okay. Can someone read it then for me? So I'm working on this IP development now, and what I've been really, really, really have is a rough story outline, and I gotta come up with all the characters' environments, and nobody knows what to. Do. I think that's what you wrote down. I don't uh, have a direction to work with. Wait. Well, so what do you think he's saying? I'm not sure either. Uh, I heard you're working on an IP. Is it by yourself? Yeah, is it for like a class or something? All right, sorry. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so... um. Uh, it's for work, uh, so like we only have like a really rough story outline, <laughs> and actually nobody knows like what to do next. Like we don't have a, a like really clear direction in terms of uh, visual style. Got it. So um, I don't know, but the boss seems like he has like a pretty solid idea of what it might look like, but he doesn't. He just doesn't really know how to like explain it to me, so it's been stuck for like two weeks, uh, and uh, I'm just like randomly coming up with um, sketches and thumbnails, um, and I'm not really sure like how to like really push the the project further. Got it. Um. Yeah. You just gotta talk with it more and try to figure it out. If it's someone else's project, yeah. then they need to communicate what they want from it. And they have to communicate mm -hmm. what they want from you and what you can provide yeah. for it. Um, because if they don't know what they want, then yeah, it's really difficult to work with because you don't want to screw up. But if they're like, yeah, so there's two scenarios that I see from this, okay? Mm -hmm. One is that they just tell you kind of like what they want, uh, and you tell them, okay, if you don't have an idea, like hard, it's hard to explain it visually, then just gather reference and show it to me, you know, show it to us and the team, and we'll kind of we'll go from there, like what you want it to kind of yeah. feel like, you know, using reference so they yeah, can make a reference board, and then you guys can go from there. Um, if they don't know, but they want you to kind of figure it out, like, they're like, okay, like, I want it to be, like, this fantasy world that's kind of, like, Mass Effect, but fantasy, but I don't know exactly what that could be, then you're, all right, and so then is it okay if we do a lot of the grunt work, and then we'll just show it to you, and then if that's the case, then you do that, and what you do is then you show them several versions of that world, like, okay, here's one idea, Maybe it's stylistic like this, and here's another idea, and maybe it's stylistic like that. You know, you don't just show them one. You show them alternate worlds or versions of the okay. idea. Just like you're doing for class. Like, you just show as many good ideas as possible of that one thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, to be clear, too, my least favorite way of working is that blue sky I don't like blue sky uh, specifically working for other people because a lot of people don't understand 
their own vision sometimes. And it's really frustrating. Mm -hmm. Now, on paper, it seems great, like being on the forefront of designing something that nobody had started yet. Like, oh, great, you know. But it's, like, so frustrating and so confusing sometimes and takes a while. Uh, I prefer, like, there's already quite a good direction. And Mm -hmm. even if it's, like, 100% already directed, like, something like when I worked on God of War, it's, like, even at, like, Blizzard when I was working on StarCraft, like, it was great kind of just knowing... Like, it's StarCraft. I know what I have to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, with that being said, you know, it's it's really, really important to... Um, Communicate. Just, 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 just be clear. Yeah, exact, exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, man. Um, and so the Blizzard story and the Sony story I was both one and the same. So when I was working at Blizzard, one of the things that happened was I would work on freelance, or not freelance, uh, my personal work and studies all the time. And my boss, or my producer, pulled me aside and was like, you know, uh, the director feels like you're not doing enough work because every time he goes to your desk, he catches you doing personal work. And, you know, you need to kind of mitigate that a little bit. And I said, why? And she was just like, uh, what? And I was like, I mean, why? Because I actually, every time uh, so-and-so shows up, I have the work done. Like, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Like, the work's done. And she's like, really? I was like, yeah, it's not like, like, you don't want me to spend just countless and mindless hours grinding something without any direction, do you? It's like, you, I, I wait. Like, he asked me to do this, and I did it, and then I don't just do keep doing more. Uh, I'm practicing and getting better at my craft, you know, uh, so that way I can become better. And she's just like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so I'll talk to him about it. And so, so she did. And then basically I told her, too, I was like, you know, it's not my fault. He just randomly shows up at my desk, too, and then demands to see something, you know, and then... Um, and then expects it to be a certain way when, you know, I don't know when he's going to come by. So, yeah, of course, there's going to be times where he's going to come by and we'll be working on different things. So she told him that. And so he started showing, instead of showing up every, few, like, two or three times at my desk, he started showing up five or six times. And he would still catch me working on personal stuff. But I would always have all the work done. And he realized that was the case. He was shocked. You couldn't believe how fast I was pu- pumping this stuff out. You know? And he basically took all of the work that I was doing, uh, or all the work that, uh, he was taking all the work that I was doing, and then he gave me more. And there was like, it was, all this, it was basically all the effects work that was for the movie. He basically just got all that and just put it on me. There's three other people working on it, including myself, and I was the only person working on it. And so then that was pretty much my full-time job. And so going back to kind of the point of that was that, you know, uh, I study a lot. And I practice a lot. Uh, And the same thing happened at, at Sony, too. So, that's why I encourage people to do what you like. How did you get the job at Blizzard? Um, just, they just saw my work and they gave me a job. It's funny because okay, I, I, yeah, I applied like for five years. I know people there too for many years. And I always oh. encourage them to try to get me a job there. It never worked out. And then the day that I stopped looking... Like, they, they called me, you know? <laughs> so it's just, you never know. Like, I always tell people, you can't control that, you know. But you can always try. You can you can keep trying and trying and trying. Uh, and eventually you'll, you'll get there. I don't see why you wouldn't. So yeah, your position in Devils. I'm sorry, say it again? Oh, uh, sorry. Go ahead, you. Yeah. Oh, I was just saying, like, so, were you like a character artist in Blizzard? Uh-huh. Okay. 
That is what yeah. I does. Well, at least I know on that side. On that side, when I actually get asked, because it was kind of funny, because uh, I don't know, like since it's only been a few months ago, it's just that it's kind of funny how I saw someone else's you know path and how they are today, and you know, seeing AJ you know, and then actually meeting Arnold for the very first time in person was actually two different things. You know. So it's like, you know, being humble, I was, it was always good to see people come from point A to point B to see how they grow and everything. It's always, always great. I mean, I s still remember when Arnold, when he actually did APV and he did Overwatch. I'm just like, wow, that's a huge change. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I almost was going to work with Arnold at Real Time Worlds. They apply, I applied and then uh, almost got a job there, but I didn't want to move to Scotland. Wait, Scotland? Yeah. That's where uh, Real Time Worlds was at. Wow, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, now Arnold's like badass. I mean, he was always a badass. Just as now he's like, everybody knows he's a badass. Yeah, it's kind of funny because I knew from a friend of mine. That's the thing. It was actually, it was another art buddy that I saw from him and... You know, I met for him, he inter he kind of showed me what his stuff was, and then I actually get to know, like, you know, I don't know, get to know all the other artists from um, Uda Entertainment, so it was actually great to meet more, more, more heroes that, you know, get inspired by. It's always great. It's just kind of funny how, like, how people change over time when, you know, when you see where their careers go. It's, it's actually very amazing, too, because everybody, you know, I like to see the evolution of people, so, and, you know, like AJ included too. I mean, so like I always like to see how people evolve and how how they become when they get older. Um, yeah, I'm still working on it. And that's the thing. Everybody has an opportunity. It's not just me. Like I didn't do anything special. I just drew and painted a lot. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to bring up. I don't want to talk about. Remember about Arnold's story because I just remembered how he when he did APV. It's just. I just remember he, that project flopped, and it did. You know that, that took him a while to. Add, you know, I didn't know it was that he started from that and get to where he is right now. It was actually, I was actually kind of sad when I heard about the news of what when APB flopped. E, just happens, man. Yeah, me, anyway, uh, yeah, I mean it's. Yeah, no, nothing to apologize for. Uh, Ghost in the Shell? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I have no opinions about it. I have a weird, probably common question that you get a lot. <laughs> I feel really bad for asking this. Uh, probably because you've answered this like a million times. But what was the catalyst that made you decide to quit working a regular job and doing this? Um, the fact that I was just like, what's the point of working so hard? You know what I mean? Like, I realized that I was conditioned to be a worker through education, through the ideals that I saw in the world. And I realized, what's the point of working so hard if I don't get to do the things I care about, like hang out with my friends, uh, hang out with my family, work on projects that I care about, you know? Like the whole point was so I can have more time but uh, as I started to do more things, uh, I had less time. You know what I mean? And a lot of you guys will discover this. Like when you start getting that job, you'll realize you'll realize that time actually starts to slip away versus you get more of it. Uh, the fact the more successful you become, the more of that becomes an issue. And I, I didn't like that. I didn't like that that's kind of the truth of it. You know? I wanted to be around to see things happen with my family. And I wasn't really able to take care of my health either. You know, I've always had these headaches, but I was never, I could never get around to it because I was always working so much. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I got you. And so, I'm assuming dudes. Yeah, and so I realized what's the point of working so often, so hard at something? Like, I don't really care if I'm not like able to do the stuff that I like. And so that's what made me decide to stop working for studio, uh, especially because I had the opportunity to switch, right? Uh, I'm in a position where uh, I make enough money to keep my family afloat and stuff like that just from teaching, you know, from my gum roads to my uh, classes, right? And I work literally like half the amount of time, which is really fantastic. Um, like luckily, you know, all the stuff that I did before, the things that I've, you know, worked on before, like allowed me to be in this position, you know? I just never took advantage of it. I, I just took, try to take on too many things, too many projects all at once, feeling that that's how you're supposed to do it. You just got to expand, expand, expand. And I realized that nobody has prepared me for that mentality and success. And it's it's really interesting to see that happen to other people too. I'm watching other people online starting to realize that for themselves. It's like, what's the point of doing all this stuff if you don't have time for yourself and people you care about? You know? Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. And so I decided to just take a back seat and just say, you know, live a more simpler, more modest life um, because I prefer it. You know what I mean? Hey, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Do you still do freelance work, though? Yeah, every so often. All right. Because um, I've got some big questions. I'm not, we've got a lot of time, but I mean, obviously cliche ones, but important ones. How do you get clients? If you've got any suggestions. Yeah. Um, there's only really two things you could do that I think you can control. Okay. Which is uh, have good work and make yeah. a lot of friends. That's pretty much it. Um, there's nothing really secret about it. You know what I mean? Your contacts and stuff help you to introduce it to other people and stuff yeah, like that. Of course. Like, uh, think so I'm in South Africa, so there's not really, you know, there's no industry for that here, so. Yeah, well, you might be wrong. I might be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, the question is, how, how often have you looked into it? And and another thing is, why don't you make your own community? You know, why are you waiting for others to do it for you? Right? Think of it like this. THU, you know, THU is like one of the biggest yeah, events now. I mean, Andre just decided to make it. There's no industry in Portugal. Right? And now one of the biggest events for creative, in, for the entertainment industry is in Portugal. You get what I'm saying? Like, he made that happen. And I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm not saying you have to make an event that large either. Just saying, like, uh, start a sketch group. Start a, uh, a, a small group. Like, you, you can start small and then build into it. But, I mean, how would that get me, for instance, to get more clients that are based in the U.S. and, I don't know, where the U.K. and stuff like that? Well, because uh, here, here's the here's the way you think about it. Um, who are you talking to and who are you connecting with right now? Well, uh, pretty much nobody. I don't really know any artists. I'm like, uh, the guy that I met here, the other day was the first guy that I probably met that actually paints Yeah. in South Africa that I know of. So. Yeah, and how many people do you talk to online as well and hang with uh, on Google Hangouts and stuff like that? Yeah, not a lot. Like, pretty much nobody. Yeah, I so... I just did it all. Yeah. Yeah, imagine you're just living in, a, in an island, and you have no radio, and you're not using... Or you have a radio, but you're not using it. You know? You're expecting everyone to come to your little island, right? And this is not how it works. What you got to do is just connect. Just make friends. Come out to other events, you know, if you can. Like, save up money. Go to different places of the world, right? Don't just wait yeah. around. Um, because the way that I see it is you can't control anything else. You really can't. You can't control whether there's a job opportunity all of a sudden. 
for you, right? Um, yeah. The more you, the more you reach out and talk to people online. The heck's going on? Oh. Um, yeah, the more you uh, make connections with people outside of your your normal circles, the better you, you have chances, right? So imagine this. Imagine that you put your stuff out there and it's really, really good. And you also talk to people online. You also use the social media really well. You know, people are going to find out about you. You know what I mean? Whether, regardless of where you live. You know? Yeah. You live in a time where that 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 problem doesn't exist. You know? Of like being secluded because of where you live. Because of the internet. Yeah. The only reason that would be true for somebody is that they don't have any internet. You know? Which is true for a lot of people still. They don't have any internet at all. Right? But the yeah, most... Yeah. Yeah, but the more that people have access to the internet, the more this is not becoming true, right? Right, because, yeah. because for instance, now you're connected to us, everybody in this class. Yeah. Right? It's amazing. Right. It is amazing. And just take advantage of that. And then the quality work stuff, that's something, again, that you can control. You can control how much effort you're putting into becoming yeah. a better artist. Right? And so I always tell people, you know, whenever they ask this question, become an art director, uh, pretend to be an art director, and go to Art Station and hire a team of people that you would want to hire to work on your project, right? And that's a good way of seeing quality work, too. So, for instance, I'm going to work on a high fantasy video game, okay? And it's going to be stylistic, like super stylistic high fantasy. Okay, so I'm going to look at this maybe, I'm going to look at this maybe, <laughs> excuse me, maybe this, but look, there's a lot of good work here that I'm ignoring, you know, and it doesn't say that the work is bad, it's just that... There's the specifics that I'm looking for. And I'm looking at this, you know, this, and this. Right? Maybe not this one. This is not particularly what I was thinking about. Right? And then so then I just hire this artist, and this person happens to be in Montreal, Canada. But, I mean, it's fine. This person is in Santa Monica. Oh, this person works at Riot. But I wonder if they always worked at Riot. Because their name is not, looks like they might have brought them over. Anywho, you get my point? So, uh, how do you get people to notice you? Well, get them to notice you. Like, go on. I'm sorry, say it again? Uh, basically, your work's going to be very good, basically. So it's it's, it's really, yeah, it's really simple. It's not like a, people are going to hire good artists. And the next thing you need to do is put that artwork in front of people. Just do it. I had a student who didn't want to go to THU because he's like, ah, you know, it's too late. I have all this freelance. I just don't know if I can go. And plus, they sold out. And I was like, if I can get you a ticket, would you go? You're going to have to pay for it, though, but would you go? And they're like, uh, I don't know. Like, I was like, dude, like, you should go. You're really good. And I think if you go, it's going to be really beneficial for you. And he's like, you know what? All right. I believe you. I'm going to go. And then he went. It was one of the most uh, inspirational things th for him. He learned a lot. Got a lot of great connections. And through those connections, he got a job opportunity for CG Project. What the? Where did you get all those? I say no for the Disney. Oh, cool. This is the one that got the $23 for all of this. All right, cool. Yeah. Huh? Sweetheart, what's... Sorry, my wife is talking to me. What? Uh, 10 more minutes. 
Do you want to go with me to go look for a TV for the kids? Uh, sure. Okay, I'm going to go drop off Luke first. Anywho. Um... Hey, Anthony. Uh, yeah, just a second. Did that answer your question, though? Yeah, pretty much. I think, uh, in summary, I've obviously got to get myself out there, meet more people, because they're going to introduce me to contacts, and then for yeah. the work, obviously, portfolio has got to be what I would hire somebody if I was hiring. If I was an art director, yeah. I hire, that's what my work's going to look like. Yeah, basically. absolutely. Yeah. Like, what, is, what do you think would be good? And just look online, and you can see there's plenty of examples. Uh, one other piece of advice, too, is just don't just network with people. Like, make friends. I really mean the friend part. It's not so much about networking. It's about just making good friends because sometimes those friends become the next badass. You know what I mean? Uh, and yeah. vice versa, you know? Like, it's all about making good yeah, relationships. I have to say that. Yeah, sorry. Because if you, like, network, like, I don't like that that idea because um because you can meet an art director and they're like totally a big deal but they could be a jerk and if you network then you ignore the fact that they're a jerk so that you can like get that opportunity and then they hire you and then you hate working there yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know versus like meeting like a student if like another classmate you love them because you guys get along or you and them like are just really good friends and then in the future they get a job at a small studio I mean, they hire you, and maybe it's a small studio, but you love it. You love working there, and you guys have a great time. Or it's a big studio. You know, a lot of my friends are now working at big studios because it's just, it's just obvious. It's just a matter of time, you know, that people start becoming really good. Like that's really impossible to do if if you don't practice often. See what you're saying. Basically, they work so hard. That's why they work in there. Yeah. It for a long time. Yeah, because yeah, I was thinking more in terms of freelance though, because I understand, because I mean the companies make it quite easy because they give you a lot of submission places on the websites like Blizzard, you can apply there and stuff like that. I was thinking more in terms of freelance, but I mean I think that answers that as well. So, yeah, people need uh, to know who you are, and the best way to do that is like through Facebook, through uh, ArtStation, and just making friends online, making friends in real life. Just being out there. Uh, Don't be alone. Really, actually, it's quite straightforward. Yeah. Usually the right. the answers are. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. Great question, though. All right. Next question. I think someone else has something to say. Until I interrupt them. Hey, AJ. What's up, buddy? Uh, for... Um... I'm looking through your Gumroad tutorials. Um, yeah, totally. I'm wondering, what do you recommend in terms of like you know that would help me or help anybody with like you know their homework in terms of like uh like sketching sketching or like you know getting down to design and like you know actually making something look. Yeah, I have my design my core design principle ones are pretty good for that. Okay. But I mean, I think yeah, because my gumroads are usually just one-offs anyway. Yeah. So it's just based off of what you feel you need to improve upon. Mm. Just getting faster. And... Yeah. Yeah, man. But uh, yeah, I think those ones. Thanks. Yeah, man. I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Um, so, do you ever think about, um, I guess, your personal point of view and how that like kind of like translates in your work, like, kind of like your philosophies or uh, worldview, uh, political ideas? Like, do you ever try to? Uh, incorporate that into your work? Uh, my personal work? Um, I don't think so. I, I have pretty strong political views on certain things, but I don't really convey that through my art. 
right? Um, there have been times where I thought about doing that, though. For instance, uh, I did these series of animal designs and stuff. And I did that uh, because I'm a vegan. And I thought, yeah, let's do the most awesome herbivores and make them badass. Right? Like a, like a rhino, a hippo, a freaking uh, elephant, you know? Because mm-hmm. I, you know, think everybody should be vegan or some sort of product of vegetarian or vegan for several reasons. But I don't push it on people. And I don't really do my artwork. Um, but that's my like, political view on that. Uh, I'm, I'm strongly against uh, guns, too. That's another thing. Like, I, th- I live in America. We have a really big problem with guns. And I'm one of those people that say, yeah, we should stop selling guns, like, entirely. You know, there's some people that are like, oh, we should just, you know, we shouldn't take them all away. You know, we should we shouldn't like stop selling them entirely. Uh, I'm saying, yeah, we should stop selling them entirely. And at the same time, yeah, I get people already have guns. Like you don't have to go to people's houses and have them turn them in. Just stop selling them. That means there'll be less people having them in their house, kind of thing. These are my political views, right? Uh, this is because there's plenty of good examples already in different countries that di- that did this. And you know, it's just a, it's a numbers game. You know, it's just a fact of life. Whether you, and I love I love facts because whether you believe it or not, it's just true. When you start taking away a certain type of thing, there's going to be less of that thing. Of course, it's not going to be eliminated, but it's just going to be less of it. You know what I mean? It just is. Like, uh, we don't sell rocket launchers, so that's why we don't have a lot of rocket launch problems. You know, we don't sell explosives. That's why we don't have many explos- uh, explosives. Or terrorist acts that are based off of explosions. You know what I mean? Um, it just doesn't happen. Uh, like, very often. But you could go to Walmart buy, like, a freaking semi-automatic weapon. That's just absurd. Right? But you don't see me drawing characters that are, like, weaponless. Right? You get my point? Like, I just don't... Because my political view is my political view. Um... And it's how I feel, but, like, I could make some strong statements. And I actually was thinking about doing, like, political satire paintings and drawings, you know? I thought about it, because this is my tool and something that I could probably, can like, help fight the fight, you know, passively. But in terms of professional work, uh, it just depends on who I'm working for. Like whatever they want me to do, I do, because they're paying me for a service. And I could always turn down jobs. Like, if the NRA wanted me to work for them, I'd probably turn it down. So I'm a big fan. You know? Even if they pay me a lot of money, I probably just wouldn't do it. But I doubt they would ever hire me. Because I don't have anything in my portfolio that would need they would need my services for. Same thing with veganism. That I feel strongly about. I feel that people, and it's not that I think people should become uh, vegan. It's that we need to stop killing so many goddamn animals. It's bad for our environment, and it's bad for our health. And it's, like, clearly bad for the animals. Right? It's like murdering so many goddamn animals. Uh, really, for nece- not even for necessity. Right, we kill. I think the last number that I saw was about 56 billion a year. That's with the B, not with the M. Billion. It's a lot. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, they feel strongly about like, well, you know, it's survival. No, it's not. Like we, if you live in a first world uh, country, it's not about survival. Okay, 
There are some cultures and some indigenous tribes who hunt and kill animals, but they hunt and kill them because they have no other way of getting food. You know what I mean? And so I, I, I've been pretty good about trying to convince people about like this idea that, you know, just moderate, mitigate. And it's a trend that's uh, catching on, like more people are starting to realize how bad it is. You know? And so every year, the percentage of vegetarians slash vegans are, is growing, slowly but surely. Uh, but eventually it's going to be exponential. I think it's going to get really large, especially once we start having substitutes to meat and stuff like that. Because uh, really just people just can't get past the flavor or the taste or whatever reason. Uh, but once you start substitu substituting it and replacing it, I think people will be more on the lungs of doing it um, without really sacrificing anything. The cost of transition is very little, and when that happens, it'll be easier. And that seems the most realistic change, too. But yeah, that's why I like my political views on something like that. Uh, what else? I have political views. Wait, what? What are people writing? Oh, but that's just the thing. I never experienced gun crime ever over here. I guess we're still talking about gums and stuff. Oh, and you're saying that we have worse drug problem than guns? Uh, it's, it's not about comparing either. It's just silly. It's like, oh, well, we have other things we should worry about, we should fix. Like, we have really bad education. We got really bad uh, foreign policies. There's a lot of stuff. But to say, like, we should focus on one over another... Um, it's kind of silly as well. I think you should, we should try to fix as many as we can. There's enough people on the planet in the United States that can do that, that can mitigate and control these things. And I think the gun problem, there's an easy solution. <laughs> it's just like, just make laws that stop and selling the, the, these super effective killing machines Just stop selling them. That's it. It's just hard to convince a lot of people. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know sure how many people need to die before we start to wake up. You know, uh, every every month, I think hundreds and uh, if not thousands of people die from shootings. Uh, and I'm not talking about the mass shootings either. I'm talking about like just like kids shooting their parents on accident, uh, suicides. You know, these types of things, uh, and obvious stuff like crime. Just. We just need to, we just need to have less of it. That's all, and it's an easy solution. Drugs is a little bit more complicated, right? Because it's more about like how do you stop people from getting them across borders and all this other stuff. Uh, it used to be a worse. Like, have you guys seen Narcos? God, dude, I can't believe that that happened. It's so crazy that that was a thing. It was really bad. Um, so we've gotten much better about that. But it's, oh, my gosh, it's crazy how bad it was, right? And uh, I remember when I went to Colombia, like, my the people that were talking to me, like, my uh, my my, uh, my guides, they were talking to me about, like, how Colombia is still seen as this, like, drug company, and they're trying to, or drug state and country, and they're still trying to get past that. And it's really, it's, it's so just, you know, discouraging, you know, because they, they feel like they've gotten past it, but people still look at them as this, like, country that does it because of the whole Pablo Escobar stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, at the time, I didn't understand their problem, you know? Like, I didn't understand, like, what they meant by that. Like, I was just kind of like, oh, okay, you know, I get it. And after seeing Narcos and seeing documentaries about, like, the whole drug cartel and stuff, I was like, oh, my God, yeah, I get it now. Uh, that one must, must have been terrifying to living, live in that time in Colombia. Uh, was there another question? I'm going to answer this question and we'll move on or we'll end the class. What was the question? Uh, I was... Wondering how does the, I mean, like, 
to be a character artist? How, how does it work in a studio? Like, do, do you just do the concepts and then that's that's it? Or... Yeah, it all depends on who you work for. Yeah, it's not. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's nothing that you would. That's weird. Like I uh, just come in, they'll say, "Hey, you know, we have character design." And I just do it. Uh, I do sketches or I'll do thumbnails. Depends on what I feel makes the sense at that time. You know what I mean? Because okay. uh, sometimes they need it tomorrow. You know their concept. So then I need like a, day. a lot of thumbnails, and sometimes they need it in like a week or. It just depends on studio, oh. studio, studio by studio. There's no so it's contract based. Uh, it's just, really? it's not a very it's not a very easy question to answer because I don't want to say oh yeah just do this because I've done all kinds and it's been all different okay. ways. It just depends on who you're working for, you know. Really, uh, I say if you can do all the work for my class effectively and well, then you you can experience. Um, you, you're 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 pretty experienced and you can do you can work for most companies. Okay. Okay. It's it's not. It's not something that I would say, oh, yeah, you know, you just do this and you'll be right as rain. This is like the only standard in the industry. The film industry works much different from the game industry. The game industry works much different from the film. Uh, the advertisement industries work different. Illustration works different. Industry, so. Yeah, there's, there's just like, you know, it's, uh, there's no one answer. Uh, all I would say is be comfortable with your process. That's the best thing you can do. Like have a process that allows you to get from start to finish. Okay. Because that's really the only thing that you can count on. Because some studios will be like, yeah, thumbnails are fine. Other studios are like, no, we want photorealistic, everything. Uh, would you recommend like picking up like 3D software? So... Yeah, of course. I recommend do everything you can to get good at all the different types of uh, tools that are available to you. Why wouldn't you? You know? Okay. I would say be careful of your uh, of your time, uh, but at the same time you're not it's, you're not taking steps backwards if you practice, you know, like okay. 3D because you're learning something every time you do it, you dive into it. Like the stuff that I learned from 3D helped me become a better 2D artist. How did you become a better 2D artist? How did I become a better 2D artist? Well, because it made me see oh. forms better. I was starting to see perspective better. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you always learn from just practicing things you don't do a lot of. Okay. All right. Does it help you out? Yeah, it does. I was just thinking, like, like you do A to Z from animation to rigging and I don't know topology. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you can learn all that. Like I, I don't, I don't think I'm a master at those things, but understanding them allows you to understand why people hate your concepts <laughs> down the pipeline, right? Because you didn't think about any of those things. You're just drinking cool artwork, which is, I think, your job. You first and foremost, you make cool artwork, but you start to appreciate why you should pay attention a little bit more. You know. Okay, so if you made like something really weird and they can't model it, is that yeah. something like okay. something that you would know probably right before you even give it to them, if you understood the pipelines? Yeah. Like I said, you don't have to be a master at all these things. You just got to know why people hate you. Was there any other questions? Oh, I just made it big. Just went to Hue, Hue Cube and then just made it big. Hey, AJ, from then what you probably I have a, You probably have a... a Older version of Photoshop. Yep. So you won't be able to have it unless you use extensions of some sort. What were you saying? Sorry. 
uh, from what I've heard, uh, you're half black and Asian, right? Yeah, half black, half Korean. Oh, that's awesome. I'm half black and half Vietnamese. Cool, dude. Welcome to the mixed cultures. Yeah, really, really awesome. So you're, you're really fast, and you're, you're a really fast runner, probably, and you can jump high, <laughs> and you're smart at math. I don't know about the math part. <laughs> yeah, the other stuff. Uh, I'm not as fast as I used to be. Uh, Dude, that was so fast. Anyway, yeah. all right, guys, I'm gonna stop it here. Is there any last kind of like pressing questions? If not, it's all good. There's plenty of time. We're gonna have more times to ask questions. We have more class ahead of us. Hey, Anthony, uh, just one quick last question. Yeah, go for it. Um, thanks. Uh, what do you suggest you specialize in? Because I know you specialize in character, and the other guy on your website, I think Colin, does environment. I mean, should you just specialize in one thing and stick to that, or should you do everything, basically? Uh, you should do whatever you want. Don't worry about what I do or what Kalen does or what other people tell you to do. What do you like? If you like characters, then new characters. If you like environments, then I mean, new environments. I'm, uh, work and stuff, I mean, yeah. they're not going to let you do characters all the time, will they? I mean... Uh, for me, most they did. Wow, that's amazing. Like at Blizzard, just characters all the time. Yeah. That's it. Because I'm a character guy. That's what they hired okay. me for. Because um, I was thinking, you work at a game studio and there's only so many characters and once they're designed, I mean, then why do they need you? So, then it's the environment artists that basically take over. So. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, sure. Um, I was still able to work. All right. Yeah, yeah cool. I think the, the problem with that question is that you're, you're thinking about how to sustain a job. Sustain a job yeah. is to be the best at whatever you do. All right. You can't be replaced. That's why they didn't switch me out. You know what I mean? That's a, yeah. Uh, and the best way to be really good at something is to focus on that as best you can for many years. You know? I'm not saying that you can never do environments or characters. In fact, I've done some environments and characters and props, but 90% of the time it's, in, it's characters. Okay. You know? Um, yeah. Because if you, if you don't like doing environments, but you put environments in your portfolio... And you happen to show that to somebody, and they're like, hey, we love your environments. And they give you a job, and you don't like doing environments. Guess what? You're probably not going to have a good time at your job. You're going to do environments all the time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't really like doing environments at all. Yeah, then don't just... do <laughs> Don't do it because you can just make money. If you want to make money, then yeah, be a plumber. Yeah. There's a lot of money in that. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I mean, there's right. there's a lot of there's a lot of really easier ways to make a lot of good money, but it's not about just making money, right? It's about to finding a career that you feel satisfied with. So I'm saying, like, yeah. uh, I love concept art, and I love doing concept art, and I love being a character concept artist, and I stopped doing working for others not because I hated it, it's because I actually prefer teaching, and I can do that now full mm -hmm. time. That's like my favorite thing, actually. Okay. You know what I mean? Awesome, thanks. Yeah. Makes like, sense. Just do what you like. And uh, right. eventually you'll be making money from doing it. Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. All right, guys. I got to stop now. For sure. Got things to do. But uh, thanks again, guys. Great work. Awesome job. Uh, Keep in touch with one another, hang out with each other, talk to each other, become, you know, friends online, offline. And, you know, keep in touch with one another, talk and help each other with the assignment. And with that being said, peace out, friends. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.